Lorianne Murabito is a speaking coach, a business strategist, reformed, painfully shy gal who works with motivated business owners to leverage speaking opportunities to get credibility, sell out their high-end programs, and monetize their authority. And this is the perfect conversation to be having as people are reinventing themselves in the new year. So you're going to want to stick around for today's episode. The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to Rat Race Reboot. I'm your host, Laura Noel. And as a certified coach and former 27-year military leader, each week I provide bite-sized mindset pivots that will help you reset your mind, reawaken your spirit, and regain your control. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode. Uh, Laurieann, thank you so much for joining us today on our episode. I have to tell the audience, we were just talking about this. Um, I am all about the law of attraction and just the synchronicities and being open to them and open to receiving. And when you're in receive mode, Mm -hmm. wonderful opportunities emerge. We notice them. And it's not a woo-woo magical thing necessarily. It's even how our brain works. That reticular activating system I always talk about is how when you're looking for opportunities to connect with people who are like-minded and um, collaborations and things that will help you grow and leverage. It, you know, when you're open to that and you state it every day as a part of your vision and your goal, which I do, um, it, even in a random boutique in Nashua, New Hampshire, we, you can meet the right people, get the right introductions and be open to it and just know to just... Yes, let's connect. We have to connect. And yes. that's what we did. And that's a, yeah, you just had to be open to that. And we obviously were both open to that. And <laughs> here we are today. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, the cool thing is, is I have had this podcast operating for almost, well, a little over a year. Congratulations. And thank you. And you are my first in studio guest. <laughs> really? So, yes. So I'm honored. I'm honored. And this is going to be a great show. <laughs> well, um, you know, I was really keying in on something that I read in your bio. And by the way, uh, the rest of the bio will be in the show notes as well as contact information for Lorianne. Uh, But one thing that really jumped out at me is you are a reformed, painfully shy gal who works with motivated business owners. So I'd love to hear more about your journey and how you got started doing what you're doing. How did you kind of reform that painfully shy aspect of yourself? Well, I'm going to take you back to when I was probably a teenager. And when I say painfully shy, I mean like couldn't make eye contact. I was an expert on tile floors and sneakers. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay. Love it. But I just realized like I would watch other people just like make eye contact and have these great conversations. And I thought, this behavior of mine is not going to serve me in the long run. So I knew that I needed to change that. So all I did was I made a little bit of eye contact for a few seconds, pulled away, and realized the earth did not open up and swallow me whole. (laughs) Nobody made fun of me for actually making eye contact. And I was like, huh, if I can do that for a few seconds, maybe I could do it for a few more seconds and then a few more. And literally that was the beginning of the baby steps that I took. Wow. To peel my eyes off the floor. That's incredible. And I, I always tell people, you don't have to take these grandiose steps. It's making a committed decision mm-hmm. one step at a time. You made that decision. Okay, maybe I can hold that eye contact for a few seconds or a yes. moment. Yes. Okay, what if I doubled that or what if I did it again? Yes. So you're consciously choosing And being aware, which is awesome. And I think being fully present with this moment right here and not the, but what if? Yeah. What if somebody makes fun of, like the stuff that happens afterwards, because I have said yes to a couple of speaking opportunities that I did not think about what was going to happen afterwards. (laughs) Yeah. Or even did I worry about what I was going to say? I said, one in high school, I said yes to a speech contest. I had no idea what just, te- you know, like I right. grew up in an age where you just like teacher tells you to do something. You just go, uh-huh, okay, <laughs> yeah. I'll do that. And I won first place. 
Wow. Yeah. I won for something, and I, but I never thought about what will people say about me. Okay. I was just like, all right, I got to like do this. Self-integrity is also a very high value of mine. So when I say I'm going to do something, right. I do it. So I didn't worry about all the other stuff. It was just like, all right, this is what I have to do. Same thing happened when I was with a couple of other women. We were putting together a, a networking event. Women just network differently. Yeah. So a little bit of education, a little bit of networking. And then they pointed at me and said, Lorian, you do the speaking. <laughs> and I just went, uh-huh. Okay. I was like, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Deep inside, I was like, but I'm not a speaker. Yeah. But I spoke. I served. I came from a place of serving. Ugh. And when I was done, so I'm just going to tell everybody who's thinking about, like, but I don't know what to say. I don't know, like, how to cons- put together a, a speech. This is how my speech ended. And because you're a speaker, you'll really appreciate <laughs> this. Okay. This is how it ended. It went, okay, now I'm done. Uh, yeah. Literally said, now I'm done. If you want to have a conversation with me or if you have a question for me, I'll be in the back of the room. I just wanted to get away from the front of the room. Right. And people came up to me and said, do you work with clients? What's your website? And I was like, did you not see the train wreck that I think just happened? But I connected with the audience. There's so much goodness to unpack in what you just said. And and I think this is applicable, you know, whether your goal is to be a speaker or, you know, we're coming into the new year and people are really getting grounded and figuring out, you know, who do I want to become? What do I want to yeah. do? And what do I want to co- accomplish this year that's different from the previous years? And, you know, I'm hearing some things in here which I think are really important to hone in on. And one is, you know, you said yes before you felt you were ready. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, so that's one thing. Two is you didn't overthink. No. You, you sprung into action because your gut said, say yes. Sometimes I think there is beauty in not thinking yep. and not pausing to take a breath and just go with your gut reaction. And if it's to say yes, I mean, maybe you make a challenge. Like, you're right. This is a beautiful time of the year to reinvent ourselves. But what if you just said yes? Yes to op- new opportunities. Yes to any new opportunity. And just to see where it takes you. Absolutely. And, you know, and even in your example, you, you didn't see yourself as a speaker and you didn't know what you were going to say. Mm-hmm. But and I always say this too, and you know this as well, is you make the decision first and then the how figures itself out. Yes, it does. Um, but we typically, how we're taught to set goals is you have to know how you're going to do it before yes. you commit all to it. All the different steps right. and all the, you know, like strategize and plan. I think we waste so much time in the strategy and planning when just go do it. Yeah, yeah. Ah, that's so beautiful. And then, you know, after you did it, I, I did want to key in on one thing is how did you then transform yourself from feeling like you were really shy to actually believing. When did that happen? I, I am a speaker and I believe it. Do you remember how that transitioned for you? I don't really remember when that all happened. But once you start doing it again and again and again, and then when you're like, you, you're, you win an award, yeah. you know, that was a little bit of validation. Yeah. But I don't think you need to have to win an award to believe that you're a speaker or believe that you are whoever you want to be. You decide right then and there, like, this is who I'm going to be. Yeah. When I started my podcast, I wasn't very good at podcasting. But guess what? I did it anyways. Right. And like, eventually, it got easier and easier. Every great speaker that anybody has ever watched, they gave and started with their first speech. And if you go back and look at their very first speech, you're probably like, oh, that's kind of terrible. I mean, I leave yeah. my first Facebook Live up and tell people to go watch it. Oh, that's a go great see, idea. Go see how like stale I was because I was talking to a, a computer screen. Yeah. I, my, my Facebook Live, my live streaming muscle yeah. wasn't strong. 
I went through the same thing. Yeah, I, now I need to go back and, and try to find some of my originals, you know. Or, and then you kind of learn, like, what's the worst that can happen? The world didn't open up, like you said, and yes. swallow you whole. Yeah. Right? Yes. Um, but, yeah, then you can learn to kind of chuckle at yourself in the moment and just lighten up. Yes. Right? And not take things so seriously. <laughs> and mm-hmm. that just, that makes it more fun. It does make it more fun. And, you know, we're communicating yeah. all day long. Yeah. From the moment you wake up to the moment that you put your head down on the pillow. So learning communication skills and learning how to speak and share and influence audiences is a skill that you will never, never not use. It will never go to waste. Yeah, no, that's a great point. I think too. it was Warren Buffett who actually said, learn public speaking skills mm-hmm. and you'll increase your value by 50%. Ooh, And yeah. I think if you learn public speaking skills that you will increase your business and also your career path by about 75%. I, I could definitely agree with that. Mm-hmm. I mean, because if you think about it, yeah, we are communicating each and every day, whether it's with a family member or a loved one, we're using communication skills to influence mm-hmm. people and behaviors and um, leverage opportunities and, you know, create new friendships and business connections and all of that. And that takes, yes. bus- you know, that takes um, communication skills. Take us back to the store where we met. Right. If I yeah. had fumbled with my words, would I be here right now? Right, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. And But the other thing is, too, that I think is really important is when you were starting and you were beginning to speak, you said that you thought about the audience. So you weren't self-focused. No. And that's another um, trap that people can fall into. And all of us do it. I mean, I was recently um, training with the Arbinger Institute and I I love, yeah, I love them. Inward and outward mindset. So I'm teaching and facilitating developing an outward mindset. And I was about to do my first event and, you know, I wanted it to be perfect and polished. And I... I had to record myself for the uh, the trainer to watch me and critique me. And I was like, I'm really nervous. And he's like, why are you nervous? And I'm like, well, what if the recording doesn't work? Or what if I mess up? Or what if... And he's like, well, don't think about yourself. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Think about them. Yeah. And I'm teaching this <laughs> stuff, right? So think about how easy it is to get pulled back in to that self-interest of how am I going to look? How am I going to come across? Will people like me? What if I fumble? Well, where's the focus when we're thinking about that? And we can think of ourselves in that context, whether it's speaking, whether it's communicating, whether it's moving toward any goal. But if we're thinking about how am I serving? How can I help people? What do they need to hear? Um, what do I feel connected with? What am I hearing from them? And, and start trusting ourselves. The message doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfectly polished. But if it's real and authentic, yeah. people are going to connect with it. They will. That, that, that is how audiences connect with you. That is how like people who are just listening to this podcast, they're connecting with with us because yeah. because we're not just having a conversation between the two of us we're having right. a conversation with others yeah yeah and it, and this is really organic in that we have things that we're talking about that are emerging but we're thinking about what what could people glean from this what do you need to hear right now and i feel mm-hmm. like this is so timely um, particularly any time but particularly since people are thinking about hey i want to do something different this year. And I want to get into, you know, how do you help people? Because you're helping people really connect authentically with what they're offering and, you know, the messaging behind it and how they're communicating what they're offering. Tell me a little bit about how you help people. And before we actually go there, I want to actually share some tips with people who are just thinking, who might be saying, but Lorianne, like, I'm really shy right now. Like, I can't even imagine speaking in front of an audience, yeah. whether it's in person or it's virtual. When you're at a meeting, raise your hand and ask a question. 
something as simple as just like raise your hand and ask a question. If you are in, a, in an organization, if you're in a company, the higher up you go in the company, the more meetings you're going to have to lead, the more places you're going to have to speak. Start just raising your hand and asking a question. And then if you want to get really daring, invite some of your friends to a coffee shop, to your living room, and present and share something that you're passionate about. Speaking in front of, now you're speaking in front of like your friends. And when you go to those meetings, also conferences, if you want to go up and meet the speaker, a lot of people are going to end up up there and they're going to start asking the speaker questions. And that's how you can actually start to meet a whole lot of new people that are actually attending the same event that you are at. So how? <laughs> yes. No, I love that. I, no, I love the practical tips because you're only going to get better Mm -hmm. If you're using and developing that skill and it doesn't, yeah. you know, having that coaching and support is important, but you can also start now in, in yes. the context of any situation. And I love, I can remember it because I can identify with being shy and being at meetings and I wanted to ask a question and I could feel like, doo -doo, doo -doo, yes, doo -doo. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, never mind. So that takes a lot of, um, you know, confidence in yourself and even just to, get to the point where you're close enough to ask that question, whether or not you do it, but if you're committed to doing it, that will help develop your confidence as well. Absolutely. And I love that. Just Thank find, you. find a question and just make sure that it is a thoughtful question. Not Don't just ask a question for the sake of asking a question. Yeah. Ask something that you are genuinely interested in, genuinely curious about, because what you're thinking, probably other people that are in the audience are also thinking, but they might not be courageous enough to ask the question. Yeah, I think that comes back to, to value. Yeah. That you, your question, your thoughtful question has value. Yes. Just like everybody else's. Yes. And that's, that's a key component to speaking. Yes. So, thank you. So how I work with people, you know, I work with a lot of coaches and consultants because speaking is the best form of visibility that you actually can embrace. Speaking positions you as an expert. You know, I love to ask audiences when I'm sharing this information, you know, if, and I'll use health coaches as an example, if there was a health coach in front of the room and there was one that was sitting right next to you, okay, who would you hire knowing that you needed a health coach? Would you hire the person that was sitting next to you or would you hire the person that was standing in the front of the room? Ooh, yeah. And how they're presenting themselves. Mm -hmm. How active are they? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. 99% of my audiences actually say they would hire the person that's in the front of the room. So speaking positions you as the expert. Mm -hmm. Everybody that is in your audience is actually a qualified lead because they are spending their time, their money to be in that audience. They said yes, that they were interested in hearing you speak on your expertise and what you were gonna be sharing with that audience. So that also means they're qualified leads. So with that, maybe not everybody is ready to work with you or be a client. So some pe you're gonna be pulling in the right people and the other people that are not quite ready are gonna become referral agents for you. Yeah. It's a great way to also monetize your authority. That's, yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Instead of speaking yeah. to like, just like one-on-one, one-on-one mm -hmm. one -on -one person, you know, building those relationships, like at networking events that we're all told to go to. Go to. <laughs> yeah. Well, what if you just like spoke and shared about your passion, what you are here to serve um, this world with, and like right there, like you're speaking to an audience. Speaking is the gift that keeps on giving. It, it really is. And, you know, early on, when I first started coaching, I was definitely having a lot of those one-on-one -on -one type of conversations. And then I started um, just doing some things for free, just having some speaking engagements where I was giving people value. I'm definitely not of the mindset of, you know, oh, if you don't do this, this, and this, then, you know, you can't have this, but I'm not going to tell you the secret. I tell right. people the secret. Um, I do. And I share it with them. I want people to take something that I'm sharing, that I'm passionate about, and I want them to apply it and gain something from it. Because, yes. right, they're going to share that with other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're right. You know, not everybody at that 
given moment in time might be ready to work with a coach or with you right. um, in that capacity. But there are some people who are. I had a client from a speaking engagement that I did two years later. This is what I mean. Speaking she reached out to me. gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. It's yeah. never a one and done. Nope. No. Yeah. I'll never. Yeah. She reached out and said, I wasn't ready then. I'm ready now. So you're sharing your passion and getting really honed in on the message that you're sharing. You're serving other people and people yeah. feel that. They know mm -hmm. that you're giving them something real and authentic. Yes. Absolutely. So part of what I do with people is I help them find their story, find a story like to share with an audience because p audiences love stories. Your audience members get to see themselves in your story. And I help my audience, uh, my clients actually craft their presentations, a signature speech, a speech that you would give again and again and again with minor little tweaks so that for each audience, you know, it seems like you wrote it just for them. Yeah. But there's certain components to a presentation, whether you are speaking for your business or you're e even if you're giving like a business presentation, because speaking is not necessarily just Zoom and stages. Right. It's podcasting. You know, it's how you introduce yourself, you know, at a networking event or, you know, a conference when you're, when you're meeting people. So there's always that opener. You want to grab your audience's attention. Then you want to share with them your, what I call your authority section, which helps your, the audience think of, all right, you've got my attention, but why should I listen to you? So that they will continue listening to you. And then we have what I call the value section. And that's where you are actually giving really good information. Things that the audience can actually walk away and use. I call, like, you wanna, I always want my audience to walk away with some gold nuggets that they can implement right away and not after like a month or two of, you know, getting everything ready. And then there's like these stories. This is my, part of my secret sauce is the yeah. stories that you, that you had from your clients Stories that have lessons that actually will help your audience overcome their objections. Because everybody's got an objection like about, that won't work for me. I've tried that before. I don't have enough time. You know, I have stories that address all of those. So that again, at the end of the presentation, when I make my offer to the audience, whatever that might be, the right people are going to raise their hand and say, I want to know more. I need to do this. That's brilliant. You know, and then we like tie it all together, you know, with a nice, beautiful close. Yes. You know, and there's a whole lot more. I mean, I made it sound very, very simple <laughs> right here. But what I do is like, I just like, I walk people step by step through mm -hmm. this process so that like they're injecting humor because audiences, yep. you know, in the speaking world, we say, the more they laugh, the more money you make. Oh, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's, it's, uh, yeah. You know, like having a sense of humor, yeah. being yourself. So yeah. my approach is not cookie cutter. Yeah. I do not want a bunch of, you know, coaches and consultants speaking and like being like me. Yeah. No, I want their personality to come out because that's what the audience is going to connect with is when they are themselves. And I have a lot of people who have never spoken before. Really? Yes. A lot of clients who have never spoken before, afraid of speaking, come to me and just say, I'm going to like overcome this fear. That's all there is to it. And we work together. And after their first speech, and I love to ask this question, Laura, yeah. were you nervous? And they always, no. <laughs> Not even a little bit. No. It is always my goal that my clients feel like they had five years of experience before they got up there and gave their first presentation. I love that you said they feel like they've had five years of experience because that feeling always precedes an outcome. Yes. Always. Always. And so that's, I think, also a key component of how you help people too is you're walking people through a process, but you're also helping them to develop the mindset that enables them to step into that persona, that person who is them, that's yes. their authentic self. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, and then like once you have your presentation, like what do you do with it? How do you, you know, how do you pitch meeting planners? Like how do you have those conversations when you get booked to speak? Like how do you have those conversations, you know, so that you're talking about the event so that you can customize your presentation? 
And you also sound like a pro. Right. I don't want any of my clients ever coming across as being a novice, even if it's their very first presentation. Yeah, yeah. that's... Uh, and so do you find then that pretty much anyone can learn these skills if they have a desire? As long as they have a desire to learn yeah. something new. And I have yet to find somebody um, yet that wasn't a good, wasn't a good match. Yeah. You know, because usually the people who are raising their hand to like work with me are people like, I want to do this. Uh, yeah. Like they have that calling, like I have this mm -hmm. calling to speak, this voice inside of me that says I need to speak up, I need to start sharing, this is going to be the way that I'm going to get visible with the world and share my business. Yeah. So yeah, it's, are, you have to want to learn a new skill. Uh, yeah, that's a key component with any any coaching, right? They ha mm -hmm. The desire has to be there. And it sounds like your clients, because you've experienced this yourself, I mean, transformation, not only in the business, mm -hmm. but as a human being. Yes. Have you seen a lot of that in your, your clients as well? Oh, yeah. Like yeah. who they become. Right. Is just is so beautiful. It's... It's so touching, yeah. you know, and they're going to go on to inspire their audiences. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that is it's, a, it's just, it's a lot of fun. And, you know, I keep seeing, you know, people like are nodding their heads. Also. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think a lot of people are agreeing with what, <laughs> with what I'm sharing today. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think this yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, you've given us so much to consider and to think about. You've given us and the audience practical tips to get started, but let's say somebody is ready to take this a step further and really leverage the support of a coach. Um, how do they get in contact with you? How can they start working with you? How can they learn more about connecting with you? Well, you can learn more about connecting with me through my, my podcast, which is Be In Demand with Lori Ann. My website is also speakandstandout.com. And I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram and Facebook a lot. So those are some other places that you can just send me a DM and just say, hey, like I heard you on this podcast. I'm interested in learning more. And we'll have a conversation, yeah. you know, and if it's right, I will invite you onto a call and we'll have a conversation about your goals. And I will share with you what, which one of my programs I think you'd be a great fit for. Well, thank you so much for joining us today on Rat Race Reboot. Thank Again, you. this was very timely. I, I encourage all of you to go to Lorianne's website, connect with her, learn more about what she does, listen to her podcast, and start applying these tips that she gave all of us. Um, I'm going to leverage those myself, but I'm really excited you joined us today. Thank you again. Thank you. And remember, everything is created twice first in your mind, and then in physical form. So until we meet again, we'll see you next week. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Bye. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.